Hey Church, back to you with another midweek video um, with the hopes that we will all become better doers of the word and not just hearers of the word. So let's get right into it. Uh, we have finished up our series talking about our inner man. And last week we talked about how, like Paul tells us in Romans 7, that he f always finds this principle. And I'm paraphrasing that when he seeks to do good, which means God has done something in him and in us that wants to do good, wants to live for God, that he finds this principle that when he seeks to do good, there is evil present within me that is working against me. Or like it says in Galatians and what he what he's talking about is the flesh, that the flesh sets itself against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. That as we've been learning about this inner man, which is our spirit being reborn and inside of us, we have the Holy Spirit of God and also our spirit. Um, that is our inner man. But we have this inner man within our flesh. And we know that God has has killed the flesh when we make a decision to follow Christ. We are a new creation. We 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 are we should be regard each other not by the flesh but from the inner man. Yet and still, just like you 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 pull flowers out of a out of the ground for a little bit, they still remain vibrant. They still look like they have life, but they're dying. Our flesh is the same way. We still have this body that 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 is wasting away. Paul told us that the outer man is wasting away, but the inner man is being renewed day by day. So when we seek to do good, Paul tells us in Romans 7 that I find this principle, the, and I'm paraphrasing, but I find this principle that when I seek to do good, that's the spirit, the inner man, evil is present within me. Now, do you have evil present in you? Absolutely not. But the flesh is there that says, you know what? I want to read my Bible. I don't want to read the Bible. I, I want to abstain from this particular sin. I want to do this sin. It's a battle within us. And so last week we talked about in order for us to be able to do that, Paul actually gives a prayer in Ephesians 3. He prays for the church and, and we find that he, he lists out a lot of effects of this. But what he's actually praying is that your inner man would be strengthened by the Spirit of God. And so last week we talked about how do we strengthen this inner man. We talked about number one, strengthening the inner man means crucifying the flesh. It means taking away um, the power that we give to the flesh. Often when we're stressed out, when we're when we're sad or when we're depressed, when we have all these things going on, there's something in our flesh that says, in order for me to get rid of this feeling, I need to do this. Maybe it's drinking, maybe it's drugs, maybe it's sex, maybe it's maybe it's just veg out in front of the TV and act like you don't have responsibilities. Those are fleshly things. And we have to learn to crucify the needs and desires of the flesh so that we can live out of our spirit. The second thing that we, we learn on how to strengthen that inner man is to actually walk by the spirit that the flesh is going to make us feel like we don't want to do the things of God. And often we can pray about it. We can we can talk about it. We can get counsel about it. But until we actually get up and walk and do those things, we're often not going to experience the power that the Holy Spirit has given us to do these things. You've seen it when you tried to, to go and preach the gospel. You, you ever went, wanted to go preach the gospel and you've been nervous? And then the second that you begin to, to preach to someone, you're filled with life. Why? Because you are walking in the spirit. That means doing the things that God wants you to do. So when we obey God and do the things that he tells us to do, we find that, hey, there's actually something in me that wants to do this. Paul tells us that um, God has given us the will and the work in order for us to do what we need to do. Uh, he's given us the desire and he's given us the ability to do it. But often if you're sitting, if you're sitting on your butt and not doing anything, you're not going to experience the power that's there. So first we crucify the flesh. Second, we walk by the spirit. And then Lastly, we have to learn the principle of sowing and reaping. We learn in Galatians that, that God tells us that don't be, don't be a fool, don't be deceived. If you sow seeds to the flesh, you will reap from the flesh. If you sow seeds to the spirit, you will reap from the spirit. We have to learn that the things that we do moment by moment are sowing seeds. And you're either sowing seeds to the flesh, just like you're literally going out, putting seeds to the flesh. And you may not see a fruit in that moment. But if you continue to do that, you're going to have a fruit of sin and death. If you do the same thing with the spirit, it's going to work. But here's the thing. 
often when we sow seeds, if you, I mean, you literally take it just like you would a farmer. Um, when they sow seeds of corn, they don't reap the fruit immediately. They have to continue to do that. And over time they reap fruit. It works like that with the flesh. When you begin to think on thoughts that you shouldn't think, when you begin to go down paths that you shouldn't go down, there may not be an immediate effect in your life, but if you continue to do that, you will reap fruit. It looks like you putting your eyes on places that they shouldn't be, thinking thoughts that they shouldn't think, and eventually your body's doing things that you know you shouldn't be doing. But it works the same if you sow seeds to the Spirit. If you begin to do the things that God tells us bear fruit, getting in His Word, praying, worshiping, spending time around His people, when you do those things, even if it seems like there is no immediate effect, those things will bear fruit in your life. And so I, I hope to you, my question for you guys in, in, in the sermon was one, do you see the works of the flesh in you? Okay, that's important for us to know so we can begin to crucify that. And then where do you see the spirit working in you? And that's important because we need to have faith for that. And so um, I'm very excited that we were able to get that information. I encourage everyone to go back over it because it's important. Those that that little mini series of principles that really changed a lot of things in my life. This week we are getting back into Revelation. We'll be in Revelation 14, and we're going to be talking about, in my opinion, one of the most important principles of how we should live in these last days. We have a lot of different um, ministries that 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 have a different focuses. I mean, even within our church, we have ministries that have focuses on here and there, and we're going to talk about that on Sunday. Um, but there should be one undergirding foundational missional mindset for all of us. And we're going to learn about that this week. There's something called the harvest. In Revelation 14, we're going to see the harvest of all of the earth. And I'm looking forward. It's going to be a little weird, a little creepy, um, but it is going to be, I think, encouraging and hopefully focusing us back on the mission of God. I see you guys on Sunday, Lord willing. Love you. And we will be outside, hopefully warm, um, but protected in Jesus name. Love you guys. Bye. Sun to the setting, say my praise, your.